Sunlan, are you really all right? Put me down, Shirlian said. No, Sunlan replied. Shirlian was taken aback by his response. What's going on? Was there something on the ground? That pair of arms was still holding him tightly, without any intention of letting him go. Shirlian was going to raise his hand and gently push himself away, but just as he laid his hand on Sanlang's chest, he abruptly remembered how he had just been randomly touching him all over, even feeling up his Adam's apple, and quietly withdrew his hand again. It had been hundreds of years since the last time Shirlian cared about what was awkward, but now there was a voice in his head telling him that he'd better stay still and stay decent. Just then, an enraged, sorrowful wail roared from the other side of the pit. A voice cried, What happened to you? Those words were shouted in the Banyue language, and hearing the voice, it was General Kemo that Shirlian had dragged down with him. Since he was already dead, the fall wouldn't have killed him, only blasting a human-sized crater in the ground where he crashed. But when he climbed up from his hole, he started screaming. What's going on, my brothers? What happened to you? When he howled into the pit earlier from the top of the wall, there were hundreds and thousands of voices that answered his call. As if the pit was filled to the brim with angry, menacing ghosts. But right there and then, other than Kermo's cries, Shirlian could only hear dead silence. There wasn't even any sound of breathing or that of a heartbeat from the sun lung who was next to him. Shirlian's breathing hitched, suddenly realizing what was amiss. That's right, even though Shirlian was pressed against sun lung, he couldn't detect any sounds of his heart beating or his breathing. Kermo roared, Who killed you? Who killed all of you? When our jaw first fell, there were still horrifying sounds of flesh being ripped apart. But after Sun Lung jumped, there were no more sounds. Who else could it be? Kermo himself must have realized this and shouted towards them. Killing my soldiers, you're dead. I'm going to kill you. Although he couldn't see, Shirlian could still sense danger rapidly approaching and jerked his body. Sun Lung, watch out. Don't worry about him, Sun Lang said, still holding Shirlian tight. He made a small sidestep and spun around. In the dark, Shirlian heard a series of broken clanking sounds, clear and intense, swishing here and there. Kermo rushed to capture them, but missed the first time, and turned around to attack again. Sun Lang also easily sidestepped again and avoided him. Shirlian's arms involuntarily climbed up Sun Lang's chest once more and held on tight to his shoulders, unconsciously clutching at his clothes. But the arms carrying him were steady. Even with all the spinning and sidestepping, the hold was still strong and secure. Shirlian could feel something cold and hard on those arms that would poke at him every so often and was a little confused. In the endless blackness, streaks of shimmering silver flashed everywhere, and sounds of a sharp metal inflicting wounds were accompanied by Kermor's angry roars. It was obvious that the Banyue general was heavily wounded by now, but as tough as he was, he refused to admit defeat, and once again he rushed toward them. Shirlian called out, Roya. The silk band answered his call and shot out. A loud snap sounded in the air, and Kermo seemed to have fallen over from getting smacked by Roya. Kermo shouted from the ground, You two, two against one, this is unfair. You were going to kill us. Who cares if it's two against one, or if it's fair or unfair? Saving my life is more important. I'll kill you first, Shirlian thought. Sun Lang, on the other hand, only sneered. Even one-on-one, -on -one, you won't win. You don't have to fight. The last line was directed to Shirlian, 
and the words had none of the glib, mocking tone. All right, Shirlian responded, but also prompted him. San Lang, why don't you put me down? I'll be in your way like this. You're not in the way, San Lang said. Don't come down. Why can't I come down? Shirlian asked curiously. This guy couldn't possibly enjoy fighting while carrying someone. San Lang's answer only had two words. It's dirty. Shirlian had never imagined that to be the answer. In such seriousness, too. He thought it was kind of funny. It also made him feel kind of strange. The feeling was hard to describe, but his heart was unmistakably warm. You can't possibly keep holding me like this, Shirlian said. I could, San Lang replied. Shirlian was only joking, but San Lang's words had no trace of half heartedness, and suddenly Shirlian didn't know what to say. In the time that they were talking, Kermo had never ceased to attack. Both of San Lang's hands were firmly holding on to Shirlian, but something else was keeping Kermo at bay whipping him to defeat. He shouted while slowly backing off. That bitch made you too. He hadn't finished his words before a large boom sounded and the massive man fell to the ground, no longer able to stand. Shirlian hurriedly said, San Lang, don't kill him. We still need to question him if we want to get out of here. San Lang heeded his words and stopped. I wasn't planning on killing him anyway. Otherwise, he wouldn't have lasted till now. Dead silence returned anew to the sinner's pit. After a moment, Shirlian asked, San Lang, did you do all of this down here? Even if nothing was visible in the dark, with such an overpowering stench of blood, such an aura of bloodlust, plus the enraged madness of Kermo, it was obvious what had happened down here. There was another momentary silence before Shirlian heard Sun Lang's response. Yes. It was an expected answer. Shirlian sighed. How should I say this? Shirlian chewed on his words and organized his thoughts before continuing in a serious tone. Sun Lang, next time you see a pit like this, don't just jump in randomly. I couldn't even stop you. Really, I didn't know what to do. Sun Lang didn't seem to expect this kind of response and let out a confused, eh? When he spoke again, he sounded a bit odd. You don't want to ask anything else? What else do you want me to ask? Shirlian said. For example, whether I'm human, Sun Lang replied. Shirlian rubbed his forehead. Mm, I don't think that that's necessary. Is it not? Sun Lang asked. Is it? It's not important whether you're human or not. Oh? Sun Lang questioned. Shirlian crossed his own arms while in Sun Lang's arms and said, Relationships should depend on chance and whether we're on the same wavelength, not on identity. If I like you, you can be a beggar and I'll still like you. If I dislike you, you can be the emperor, and I'll still dislike you. Shouldn't it be like that? It's simple logic, so whether you're human or not is irrelevant. Sun Lang laughed out loud. Yeah, you're very right, he said. Right, Shirlian said, laughing along with him. But the more he laughed, the more he felt something was off. And it came to him suddenly. He was still letting San Lang carry him, and the scary thing was, he had gotten used to being in this position without even realizing it. What kind of situation was this? Shirlian cleared his throat quietly and said, Um, San Lang, we can talk about that later. How about you put me down first? San Lang seemed to have chuckled and said, Hold on. He carried Shirlian and walked for a bit before gently letting him down. Touching down, Shirlian could feel hard, flat ground. Thanks, he said. Sun Lang made no gesture in response, 
and after thanking him, Shirlian looked to the sky. Above them, in the navy blue sky, hung a crescent moon, bright and beautiful. Just that, watching the view from a square frame, made it feel like one was a frog in a well. Shirlian commanded Roya to try and reach for the top, but as expected, it was stopped halfway as if it bumped into an invisible wall. Roya rebounded, unable to go higher. There's an array drawn around the sinner's pit, Sun Lang said. I know, but I wanted to try anyway, Shirlian said. I can't give up until I've tried, you know. I wonder how the others up there are doing. Would the girl in black have also swept them down? He retold how the girl that was hung on the pole had suddenly come alive and swept all the Banyue soldiers down into the pit to Sun Lang. While talking, he stepped on something on the ground, appearing to be an arm, and Shirlian almost tripped. He steadied himself immediately, but Sun Lang still reached out and helped to support him, chiding, Be careful. I told you the ground was dirty, Sun Lang added nonchalantly. Shirlian now understood what dirty meant and said, Don't worry, I want to ignite a palm torch to see what's happened down here and go from there. Sun Lang didn't say anything. Just then, from afar, Kamo's voice cried again. You two, doing the deeds of that bitch, all of the thousands of dead souls of this kingdom will curse you, curse you. Shirlian turned toward Kermo and asked using the Banyue language, General Kermo, who is that, that person that you speak of? Kermo responded with hatred. Why pretend to ask that wicked witch? Is it the woman cultivator roaming in the city streets? Shirlian asked. Kermo spat angrily on the ground and Shirlian took that as a yes. He continued to question, weren't you a loyal supporter of the Banyue Gosha? Kermo was provoked by his words and yelled, I, Kermo, will never again be loyal to her. I will never forgive that bitch. Afterward, he started uttering a string of curses. Inflamed and hysterical, his words rapid and incomprehensible, and Shirley and Blank unable to follow. He looked to Sun Lang and quietly called, Sun Lang, Sun Lang. Sun Lang translated, he's cursing. He said that woman betrayed his country, opened the fortress gates and let in the Yang'an army to slaughter the city. She's got the blood of her people on her hands and of his brothers whom she pushed into this pit. He will hang her dead a thousand times. 10,000 times. Wait, hold on, Shirlian quickly exclaimed. How could this be? There were two things that didn't match. First, the woman cultivator roaming in the city streets Shirlian spoke of earlier was supposed to be the lady in white. But now, Kermo continuously called the Banyue Gosha bitch, saying she pushed his brothers into the sinner's pit. Earlier, when the black-clad girl swept the soldiers into the pit, Kermo swore and cursed her as the same thing. Plus, the last bit, to hang her dead a thousand times. Shirlian suddenly realized that they couldn't possibly be talking about the same person. Second, it was the Banyue Gosha who had betrayed the kingdom of Banyue. Shirlian interrupted Kermo. General, the Banyue Gosha that you speak of, was it the girl in black hung on the pole of the sinner's pit? Who else could it be if not her? Kermo shouted. The scrawny, corpse-like little girl in black was the real Gosha of Banyue. But if that was the case, then who was the lady cultivator and her black-clad companion strolling through the streets looking to kill them? The girl in black obviously had unmeasurable power and could easily sweep dozens of hostile Banyue soldiers off the wall. 
So why was she hung above the sinner's pit?